Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today I was going to show you how to install a checkpoint management server and uh, we're going to make a quite cool lab and it will be a multiple uh, episode series so to say and we will use VMware Workstation and um, the setup will look like this so first of all we need to have a VMnet 6 and that will be our internal network then we will need to have VMware 8, that will be our external network that is bridged to the internet. And then we will have one more VMnet for uh, synchronization for the gateways. And my plan is to have it like this. So we will start off with installing the Checkpoint Management Server and this will be a Gaia installation. And it will be a pure management station, it will not be like a standalone. And then we will have a Windows 10 machine, and this one will have uh, uh, Putty and uh, our Google Chrome and so on, so we can actually fully install the management server, and we will also have the smart console, so we can really manage it. Then we will add two checkpoint gateways. And we will build them into a cluster. And this way we can have a cluster connected to our management station. The same thing that we can have our Windows 10 machine. And when we have combined these two clusters, we will also provide internet through this one. So we will have a full blown lab. So we are able to test like IPS, application control, URL filtering. So we can really make a real CCSA or CCSC lab. And we will do upgrades and uh, if you guys like it, we can even do like migrations and so on, but um, let's start this. And we will do the distributed deployment. So we will have a management station and then we will have a gateway and then we also have the, the Windows machine for the smart console. And the requirements for a security management server, uh, SMS, is a two core and eight gigs of RAM. And then they recommend you to have one terabyte of disk space or minimum 110 gig. I mean, we will be doing this in lab, but I will actually put four and six and eight gig. And for the gateways, we need to have two CPUs and four gigs RAM. So I did test this lab a bit before or I did do this setup before and I would say you need 32 gigs of RAM in your box and you need quite a high, you need quite a powerful machine. So let's create a new management station. So file, new virtual machine and we will do the custom and uh, workstation 15. And I have already downloaded the correct image and you can find the correct image on Checkpoint's website. We will be using R8040, so just click download and um, you will be presented with this part and we will use a clean installation. So we will get to this page where we are able to download the, um, the image file and you see I'm not logged in here. so. Hopefully you, you guys will be able to log in as well and just download this one. I will provide the links in the description below. So we select our image and then next and we will be running a Linux and it should be this one Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 64 bit. And we will call it CP management and you can put it where you, where you think it fits. Um, it's good to have it in an SSD disk, but I'm actually running this on a USB three disk. So it works. And here you see the number of CPUs one. I will keep it to one because I only have one CPU, but I will use four. So I will use four cores. And then I will select eight gigabytes. So that's 8,192 megs. And I will just put it on this one for now, but we will actually change this because we want to have it in VMnet 6, but just do next. And uh, I always keep it recommended here. 
and same here and create a new virtual disk and here go as big as you can um, I will put 300 gigs and hopefully that should be enough for uh, for this lab in production I use one terabyte but um, I don't have so much disk so we will have 300 in this and we will have this one so here you have the overview but remember we wanted to change this so customize hardware and then we will change on the network adapter and we will do this to custom and we will select vmnet6 because there is where i have my windows host and do we need to do something more 8 gigs for cores we have the image uh, now this should be fine so just take close and then finish and here we have our management station so just uh, click power on this machine And you see here, we get uh, a login or a screen, so to say, and just uh, select install Gaia on the system. And I have an AMD CPU and that uh, not supported by Checkpoint. Uh, if you want to run this in production, make sure to um, follow the hardware compatibility list. I will put that in the description below. And that's also including like what VMware version you can run or which open server you can run. If you're running appliance, it's no issue. But um, then you have the sizing issue that we're talking about in a different video. I always recommend to run the management station in VMware. It's a lot easier. It's scaling a lot more. And Nowadays, it's not so big of an issue with like SAN and so on. Most SAN today in new environments, they use full SSD disks. So, I mean, performance should be more than ac more than enough. Just make sure to not put put like the 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 management station on host that is already full. So, make sure that you have enough performance for a box like this. They're quite needy. So this process will install the Checkpoint Gaia R8040 operate system. Uh, do you want to proceed? Yes, I do. And then make sure to select your keyboard. Uh, if not, you will have issue with um, when you want to type in the password. So I will select Swedish and you select your keyboard layout. And here you see why we wanted a large disk space because we are not able to to change the backup and upgrade partition so i will put try to put this to 100 so 100 is uh, is good enough and we have 50 gigs of log and then we have 134 gigs of backup and upgrade uh, so i think we will run for this 100 and then 50 and um then just press OK. And here you need to type a password. That's why you need to have your keyboard layout to whatever you are using. And uh, so we decided to use 200 slash 24. So let's configure that. 200. And we put dot one as default gateway because that's what our clusters will have or our cluster will have later on. And then press OK. And do you want to format the hard drives? Yes, I do. And then this installation, it will take a few minutes depending on your hardware. Uh, in VMware, it goes quite quick um, this is not the full installation because we actually need to do the first time wizard and the first time wizard is done from a web UI and that's why we needed a Windows host or or something with a web browser on the same network 
And as we want to do like more advanced testing where we actually want to send the traffic through the, the gateways that we're going to install in the next video, then I think it was easier just to install a virtual VMware machine, a virtual Windows machine running Windows 10. You can download Windows 10 uh, ISO from, from Windows web page and you can run it in, um, you don't need to activate it. Same with this uh, checkpoint part. When you install it, you get a demo license that will last for, I think it's 14 days or 15 days. If you want to run it more, you need to add license. But uh, if you're a partner, you can uh, generate demo licenses. And if you're a customer, you can ask your your partner if they can provide you with some uh, demo licenses. So here we see that the installation is completed. And as I said, we need to run the first time wizard and that you need to do from a web browser. It's possible to run it with a, a script in CLI if you really cannot do it, but uh, I will not show this in this video. We will go through, through the first time wizard with web browser. So let's reboot. So here you see that the system is starting and if you're running like appliances or open servers, this takes a few minutes. I mean, if you're running like HP servers, it takes five, 10 minutes for them to boot. And that's just to check like memories and so on. The service gets faster and faster, but the reboots of them get slower and slower. And I'm not sure how that actually works, but uh, in VMware it's uh, instant. So that's really nice. So here we see that we have a login prompt and uh, we can try to log in here. And you see here, in order to configure your system, please access the web UI and finish the first time wizard. We can do some, uh, some show here. So we can do show configuration. So we are able to check like uh, our interfaces and so on. So we can do some changes if we want to do like change the default route and so on. But let's go into the Windows machine. So this is the Windows machine. I have not installed like, um, uh, well, more or less anything on it, but HTTP uh, S and 192.168.1.200. And you see that this is not secure and that's because the certification error and we don't have any certificate on it. So details go to the web page. And here you see the name because we haven't put the name on it yet. So admin and then your password. And you will get to the first time wizard. So this is the first time wizard. And you see that the platform is VMware. And if you have open server, it will stay open server. If you have an appliance, it will show your appliance. So next and continue with R8040 configuration. And yes, we will have this manually. We don't want to have it on DHCP. It's uh, not good to have service on DHCP. So uh, .200 like we agreed on and Ethernet zero. We don't have any other interfaces. And here we need to select a host name. So we do CP management. Uh, all of this we can select later, but uh, I will press next. Normally I would recommend you to use NTP. I don't have an NTP, so I will just put it manually. We can change this later. And I live in Sweden, so Stockholm is closest to me. I actually don't live in Stockholm, but um, Stockholm is the capital of Sweden. So just next. And uh, security gateway and or security management server. Next. And we will deselect the security gateway because we don't want to run security gateway and the management station on the same page or on the same box. And uh, we are only going to have one. So it will be the primary. And you see here that you can uh, select secondary and log server. A log service maybe something that we should do separately just to show you how it works. But you see here that we have a primary security management server and we have deselected this. 
Uh, we will download the blades and contract automatically. Uh, we don't have any blades and contracts because this is in demo mode or we we will run this as a lab and I will just use the, the license that comes with it when you install it. That is the 15 days try. So next. And we will use the Gaia administrator. I will show you how you can create new admins, but um, we will do that in the GUI. So next, and this is from which client should be able to log in to the management station. And I will change this to 192.168.1.0. That's our VM at six, 245.245.0. So that's a slash 24. And then next, and uh, we can send the data to checkpoint. That's okay. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And now it's actually starting to install the packages that we want to have on this box because it's the same image file and the same process, the first part, even if you're installing a, a multi-domain or a gateway or a management server or log server. So the first part um, with the CD, so to say, or USB into the box, that's the same. And then you select in the first time wizard what you actually want to run on this box. So it's quite nice to have the same image for everything. It makes it a lot easier. Um, maybe it's a bigger file, but ah, I don't mind. This will take a few minutes and I will uh, fast forward so you don't need to wait. Now the configuration guide is completed, so just press OK. And this is the Gaia portal. So here you can actually change like your your interfaces, your routing, uh, your DNS if you need to change that. So you can add like Google's DNS here, apply. So if you miss to do something or you don't want to do it directly, you can do it in the web GUI. And it's also possible to do a lot of these parts in CLI or more or less everything. And we are going to do like this. So we see here that this has been up for, for eight minutes now. Let's see if it's actually done. So I have uh, putty here. And I have actually shared my, um, my download folder from my host computer to my Windows box. But let's do uh, putty. So 192.168.1.200. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, yeah, I have installed on this before, but uh, I will just press yes because this is a new installation. But I have I actually have installed the checkpoint management server on this IP before, and this is a new, so it's yeah, it's conflicting. You will not get the same error. So we can actually log in with CLI and we can do show configuration here as well so we can see all this part can make it bigger so you can see like set interface ethernet zero so you're able to do it in CLI as well um, but I wanted to check if the box is done so let's run top to see uh, the CPU processes and the one I'm looking for is this one so that's the firewall management process and we see that it's up and the box is starting to get lower. So we should be able to log into this and I bet that we will have a security message complaining that we have a new um, a new fingerprint and it doesn't match what it has previously known. And that's because I needed to re-record this video. So, well, that's how it is. So admin, the password that you have and uh, management stations IP. So you need to fill this in and now we will get the complaint. Uh, so you see the fingerprint of the server was changed. Um, but we will just proceed. 
and the server is still initializing. Okay, so the server is not done yet. So let's wait a few minutes because we still see that it's working quite a lot, like 200%. And if you didn't know this already, if you have four CPUs or four cores like this one, the maximum that you can have on CPU utilization is 400%. So it's not 100% that is maximum, it's 100% per core. So let's try this again. It's starting to get lower at least. So let's do it. Come on, let's see. If we're able to get into the box. It's looking better. Yeah, it's done now, so we should be able to log into it. So that was the installation of the management station. You see here that it's uh, up and running, we can log into it. And uh, the next video I will show you how to update the management station to the latest and greatest HFA because we installed it without hotfixes. And uh, if you install a new management station, that's one of the first thing that you should do. You should add your hotfixes. And after that one, you can start to play around with the settings and add gateways and so on. And that's it for this video. Please like, share, comment below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, bye.